Cosmos Solutions 8, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the price competitiveness feature inside of Google Merchant Center. Super excited. This is amazing if you want to see how you benchmark against your competition. So inside of GMC, under growth, you may see price competitiveness. If you don't, don't worry. Select Manage Programs, and then uh, at the very bottom, you're going to see Market Insights, and just click Get Started and agree to whatever terms and service Google throws at you, and then you get price competitiveness. Now, Google is going to show you when you benchmark above, at, below, or when there's no benchmark available, uh, when compared to other retailers that are selling that same product. And when you benchmark above, it's 1% above or 1% below. Now, this is really important. Read this. The benchmark price is the average click-weighted price for a product across all merchants who show that product in free listings on the shopping tab or advertise that product using uh, shopping ads. This is important because, number one, they're, using, they're showing you the entire competitive ecosystem, free listings and paid listings. That's important to know because it means that you can be a little bit more expensive. If you're above the benchmark price, it's okay because Google heavily prioritizes paid listings. So just because you're not uh, at or below the benchmark price, I don't want you to freak out. You can actually still, you can still eat off of this campaign. It's just important for you to know where it is that you benchmark. Um, and then they also mentioned the click weighted price. This means that they're um, they're grading things on a curve according to visibility. So it's not the entire ecosystem, it's the entire visible ecosystem, which is important to know. So for this particular client, all this information is blurred because um, I don't want you to know who they are. Uh, you can see that they have 9% uh, above, 9% at benchmark, 18% below, and then 64% of their products aren't benchmarked. And this is over the last seven days. And if I expand this date range, nothing changes. It's the exact same data points. However, if I go beyond 30 and I say all time, check this out. This tells me something that I already knew. <coughs> I almost killed myself just then. Which is more and more people are entering this competitive ecosystem and actually selling the, the products that these folks are selling. Talk about insanely valuable lead intelligence, right? Like all of a sudden, they were clearly the first movers in the market and now there's a bunch of other people selling the same things that they're selling. And if I scroll down here, I can see a uh, group by product type, product, category, or brand. Now, brand and category give me basically the same report, just broken down by you know other dimensions. Um, and I'm going to blur all that too because I don't want to give away my client's secret sauce. Um, same thing with product category. You can see the number of clicks. I sort by clicks descending, obviously, because I want to see where the biggest impact is. Uh, we've got our fun little heat map here. Um, but this is cool. If I select product now, it's going to give me an actual list of all of the products. Make sure that you sort by uh, clicks descending. Um, and you want to do this because you want to see the products that could potentially have the biggest impact from a, a, an intelligence standpoint. Um, it's going to show you the number of clicks. And then it'll show you your price against the current benchmark price. And then where you currently rank and where you've ranked historically. Because things change. They ebb and flow. And you can change your date range, of course, if you wanted to adjust this. Um, but you can see in you know, most of these instances, we're actually winning. So this particular client is better priced than the benchmark. Except, oh, right here. Oh, my goodness. We're at 69.95 and the benchmark is 69.46. Whatever shall we do? This one isn't a great example because let's go find a better one. And there we go. So this is an example of a, a situation where it's like, gosh, we've had 248 clicks on this particular product, and it's not a low dollar amount. I'd rather not lose this purchase to a couple of bucks, especially considering I know for a fact this particular product is going to catalyze other purchases because it's um, it's a foundational product that, that, that has the ability to accessorize. And so this would be one of the places where I go fix this because if somebody's looking at you know just a product feed and – they see the exact same product and one's five dollars cheaper. I'm going to go with the five dollar cheaper one. Why wouldn't you? Unless there's some you know huge brand advocacy reason not to. So um, really cool information, really cool lead intelligence. Here's another good example. Um, that's funny. That's the same product category too. Clearly they have their one product category needs to be fixed. Uh, here's another example. One hundred thirty dollar product. I'm not going to lose this sale for eight bucks. Not going to do it. Um, so phenomenal intelligence that will give you the information that you need in order to optimize your pricing if and when you feel you're not being competitive. I do want to go all the way back, though, and I want to say don't only compete on price. Just because you're not the cheapest doesn't mean that you're not going to be successful, number one. Number two, make it hard for Google to identify this. Um, this might be bad advice. You, you, you can decide yourself. But if you're selling the same product as everybody else and you notice that there's just downward pressure on the price, 
start to bundle your products or put yourself in a position where it's really difficult to identify it to compare apples to apples. Custom imagery helps, custom titles help, uh, and then adding bolt-ons. One of the, my favorite examples is I just bought a, a, a new laptop and I wanted a, a case for my laptop. And if you go to Amazon and you compare cases, it's really easy to see highest quality case for the lowest amount of money, right? I found my apex. But some of these vendors are getting really smart. And instead of just the case, it was the case and the keyboard protector and the little, you know, uh, uh, webcam blocker and um, a screen protector and, and, and then a sleeve and, you know, and, and so on and so forth. And now I have to compare the bundles and each one of those products adds a degree of variability because now I'm like, well, gosh, I like the screen protector on that one more than I like the keyboard. You know what I'm saying? Like it makes it difficult to compare apples to apples and it actually really helps you set yourself apart um, if you're doing things like add-ons, bundles, value adds, etc. Sometimes you can uh, you can do digital add-ons. These cost you nothing after production, um, which is it's I think it's an amazing way to provide additional value without being too too heavily commoditized. So now keep in mind the fact that Google's ability to compare is going to break down to some pretty basic items like GTIN, for instance, which there's no way to spoof and you wouldn't want to if you could. Um, and then how you choose to to bundle your products if you're utilizing a GTIN that's pre-existing is, you know, that's a whole other strategic discussion. Um, all that to say, there are ways for you to stay outside of a commoditized market. Um, and, you know, as, as retailers, you probably know that better than I do, but I like to make it th that point in as much as I can. I hope this was helpful. I hope you like our channel. I make a video every day, so like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up. That lets YouTube know we actually know what we're doing. We shoot a video every single day, so if you want to be notified, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any input, don't hesitate to hit us up in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. We get very little human interaction. Thanks for supporting our channel, and hopefully I'll see you tomorrow.